Hi, and welcome back to the Java web app tutorial series. So far in this series, we've built a CRM application complete with a CRUD view and a dashboard view. In the last video, we wrote some unit tests and integration tests to test that this application works the way we intend it to. So we wrote a unit test that tests this contact form right here, and an integration test that checks that the integration between these two components works the way it's intended. In this video, we're going to create end-to-end -end tests that start up a browser and use the application as a user would, all the way from the browser to the backend. Again, I want to remind you that there's a text version of this tutorial on Vaughn.com. As in the previous video, there's quite a bit of code in this one, so be sure to check out the text version where you can find all of this code in a copy-pasteable format. With that, let's get started. First of all, I'll go ahead and shut down my server that I have up and running. And the first thing I want to configure is in my POM file. I want to configure a profile for running these tests so that they don't get run all the time because they tend to be pretty slow to run just because there's a lot of setup that needs to be done. So here in the profile section, first of all, we'll remove this existing integration tests profile that came with the starter. We want something that's very similar, but not exactly the same as this. So remove that one and then create a new profile called IT. What this profile does, what this profile does is it starts Spring Boot in the pre-integration test phase of Maven's build, and it shuts it down after the integration test phase is done. That way we can run a test and have Maven actually start the needed infrastructure for us. We also define which goals should uh, run integration tests. And finally, that we want to get full stack traces. We can verify that this works by opening the Maven plugin, selecting the IT profile, and running the verify goal. This takes a while for it to run, but we should see a green test here at the end of it all. And there you have it. So you get the green check mark here, and we can verify that this works. Now, the second thing we want to do in the POM file is add a dependency. So we'll go up here to the dependencies. And we're going to add a dependency for WebDriver Manager. So in order to actually spin up the browser, we need to have this WebDriver that manages uh, different browsers. And by using this WebDriver Manager, we don't have to manually download uh, specific drivers for each browser. So this makes it a little bit easier for us to, to manage it. Again, make sure that this gets downloaded either because you have automatic Maven importing enabled or by running the install target here in the Maven plugin. Now there's uh, quite a bit of common setup that we want to do for each of these end-to-end -end tests. So we'll create an abstract class that we can use to base all our tests on. So we'll create a new class and call this abstract test. And I actually want this in a different package, but by default, IntelliJ collapses the packages here. So it's a little bit difficult sometimes to create it in the package you want to. Instead, you can just go ahead and move the class. And we want to put it into Combot and Tutorial CRM IT. When you click Refactor, it'll ask if you want to move it. And you can select Yes. So now you see we have two packages here, IT and UI Views List. OK, so the abstract test does quite a bit of things. So let's go through these one at a time. First of all, we define that we want screenshots to be recorded anytime a test fails. We want to turn down the logging level because sometimes the web driver manager can log excessively and make it a little bit difficult for us to actually see what's going on in the tests. Then we define some constants for the server host and port and keep track of the route that we're testing at any given moment. So when somebody instantiates a new test, or when we instantiate a new test, we pass in the route that we're testing. And the before annotation here, make sure that we set up a browser uh, with the web driver and open up a URL to this route that we're given. 
So just a bit of boilerplate plumbing here that we need, but this is something that we can reuse throughout all the tests. So the first actual test that we are going to write is for the login view. So create a new class in the same package, login IT. So we need to make sure that we use this capital I, capital T postfix on the tests because that's what Maven uses to identify these as candidates for that integration test uh, profile that we created. So here, uh, what we'll do is, first of all, call super in abstract test. So we pass in the route, empty route, which is just the uh, root of our application. And then we have one test here. We're using Vaadin test bunch, which is a commercial tool that comes with Vaadin that allows us to run these end-to-end -end tests with Vaadin. It comes with a free trial that you can start when you uh, launch the test, or if you already have a subscription, you can validate that when the test starts. Vaadin test bench comes with a element query selector that allows us to select Vaadin elements on the page. So we select the first login form element on the page. We get the username field, set the value, get the password field, set the value. We click on the submit button, and then we assert false that the login form element exists. Essentially, what we're trying to establish here is that we've navigated away from the page, meaning that the form itself is not visible anymore. So let's go ahead and run this. So again, we'll run this with the IT profile and see that it works. Okay, and there we have it. So you saw the browser popped up there briefly as it was testing it. So it did actually launch the actual Chrome browser as we were testing. Now, as you noticed, it takes quite a bit of time. Specifically, it took 31 seconds on my computer to run that. So it's quite a slow test to run because it's starting the entire application every time it runs a test. So as you're developing, it's actually easier for you to start the application the same way as we have throughout this series and have that up and running the whole time. That way you can right click on the test itself and only run the test without having to restart the entire browser for that test. Now, the next thing I'd like to do is write a similar test where we want to test that a invalid login fails, but you notice that we would essentially have to copy paste the same code for that. And that's not really a good way of creating maintainable tests. So instead, let's extract that into a page object that we can use uh, to deduplicate some of the code. So we'll create a new package here, elements.login. And in here, we'll create a class called login view element. And here in this class, we will create a login view element that extends from vertical layout element. This is something that's specific to Vaadin and test bench, and we can tell it how it can find this specific element on the page. So here we are uh, reusing those CSS class names that we put in place earlier. So we say that the element will have a class of login view. And it's important here to note that we need to have the same structure here. So our login view element extends from layout view element, which is the same as we had here. So our login view extended from layout, uh, vertical layout. Here, what we expose is one method, login, takes in a username, takes in a password, contains all of this code that we had in our test previously, except that it takes both the username and the password as parameters. And then it returns whether or not the uh, login view element is on the page after running this. So with that in place, we can now go ahead and simplify this test by using this login element. So we'll just call uh, login view element uh, and get the first one. And then we can just call login on it, pass in the username and the password and assert that it 
succeeds. Then we can now easily create a similar test for a invalid login. So we'll test the failure by again getting the login view element and then passing in an invalid password. So now I have my application already up and running, which means that I can just go ahead and run this login test like this. And you can see that the browser pops up a whole lot quicker right now than it did previously. And we now have two passing tests here. So that's it for uh, creating end-to-end -end tests with Vine and TestBench. We set up a Maven profile that allows us to run the tests only in certain cases to avoid the overhead of always running them when we're testing the application. We created an abstract test that contains some of the commonalities between all the tests, and we took a look at creating these uh, view elements that we can encapsulate some of the logic of finding the right elements on the page so that we can have more maintainable tests in the long run. And that's it for testing in this series. In the next video, we're going to take a look at what it takes to build a production build of this application and get it deployed to the cloud. So be sure to subscribe to the channel, enable the notifications so that you don't miss it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.